Mike Vrabel has been fired. Fired! Emergency, emergency podcast in session now. This is the Music City Audible. Let's get to it. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Music City Audible podcast presented by Broadway Sports Media and partnership with 440 Sports. I'm just a great with Neil, Justin Mellon, trying to get the intro quickly because we got crazy news to talk about. I mean, I guess this was somewhat speculated, Justin, but Mike Vrabel is out as the head coach of the Titans. He has not been traded. It doesn't sound like a, a mutually agreed to part ways. Sounds like he was fired because Amy Adams Strunk wanted a change, wanted a fresh approach and a fresh coaching staff what's going through your head right now justin um i guess you know trying not to be too negative because (laughs) (laughs) coaching search is supposed to be an exciting thing for the fan base and it's a good thing you know for our show and we're going to talk all through that when the time comes and we'll go through every candidate as they get identified and offer extensive opinions on their background and who they are but um pretty hard for me not to feel quite negative right now and to feel like this is an ineptness, an organizational ineptness that we haven't seen since the Tommy Smith days. Um, you've got yourself a really, a really good head coach in Mike Vrabel. I mean, you're of the, when I say you're, I mean, Amy Adams Strunk is apparently of the opinion that Mike Vrabel is a very good head coach and, and how it got to this point um, just signals bad leadership you know, bad ownership. I I think there's no way around that right now. Um, I I have a lot of thoughts uh, I want to get into, but uh, I'll I'll throw it back to you for now. I think it's important to establish right off the bat that, you know, if the Titans knew they were going to move on from Vrabel, why the heck wouldn't they trade him? Why wouldn't they, even if the compensation coming back was not what you hoped it would be, like, why would you not try to get something? Whereas now you are left with nothing for a head coach that will likely be in demand for some of these teams that have vacancies. We'll see how that shakes out. But Diana Rossini reported that the Titans believed trading Vrabel was too complicated and would take too long. They wanted to move on quickly. And she also said, I was told Vrabel never asked ownership for a trade or asked out of Tennessee. So we know uh, Rossini is sort of Vrabel's mouthpiece to the press. So maybe this is a, you know, sort of colored by what he wants to get out there. And we don't know, like we talked about on yesterday's bonus pod, Jared Stillman reported that Vrabel was going to demand ownership, hire a, a overseer boss person that would be above him and Rand Carthon general manager. So a football ops guy, like a football, ops. right? Like a, a Floyd Reese or like what Washington just did bringing in Rick Spielman and the guy from the warriors or whatever that move was. Um, yeah. So, so who knows if maybe Vrabel went into this meeting with Amy and said, I want this person. And they, she said, we're not going to do that. And he said, well then fire me. Or maybe she's never had any inclination not to fire him. Mike Vrabel's record over the last 24 games is 6-18. and 18. He went 1-5 and five in the division this year. We've seen in past instances of Titans head coaches where literally a failure to win inside the division was pretty much the, the nail in the coffin. I think um, Mike Malarkey had a similar situation there. Of course, everyone knows that he wouldn't fire Terry Robisky and, you know, sort of bit the bullet for his guys there as well. But I think a, a big reason that that even came to the point it was was because of the failure to win inside the division. Then you look around at the rest of the AFC South, and maybe this is just like an owner getting impatient, but you look around the rest of the AFC South, all three teams were in playoff contention heading into week 18, right? Obviously only one of them ended up making it in there, partially because of Mike Vrabel and the Titans beating the Jags, but um, that was their only division win. So you can see why from an on the field standpoint, the Titans ownership would have wanted to make a change, but we also have talked a lot about how we believe Mike Vrabel really is a good head coach and that these players did not quit on him. And on Monday, when they were going around to all the players in the locker room asking them if they thought Mike Vrabel should be back, it was like, why are you asking that? Of course Mike Vrabel should be back. Jeffrey Simmons reportedly was like stunned that they would even ask that kind of and question. And it felt genuine. And it, it felt did. genuine. It I know did. you're not going to come out and crap on your boss on you know live television, whatever you want to call it, but it felt genuine, right? For, especially from the leaders, Jeffrey Simmons, Harold Landry. I thought Will Levis, you know, body language, everything he said insinuated he really wanted Vrabel back as well. So... Um, I just, you talk about the failure to trade him. I'm with you. I'm torn on that topic now. I wish I wasn't, but some of the reports that came out, you know, saying, oh, it would take till mid January to facilitate a trade. It's not easy. He would have no, and this is true, he would have no incentive to play ball, right? Like I'm leaving, right? So, and then you're trading me to a place that's giving up assets that are going to, you know, it's going to deter me in my ability to build my new football team. 
Um, you miss out on some candidates the longer this thing goes on. I talked on, on yesterday's episode about how they did that with Mike Munchak and, and, and how that ended up and the staff that he put together. Some of that stuff makes sense, but I do ultimately think when you've got a head coach as good as Mike Vrabel, as good of a reputation as Mike Vrabel, like would the Pittsburgh Steelers fire Mike Tomlin tomorrow or would they trade Mike Tomlin? And I know these guys have won Super Bowls. Would the Kansas City Chiefs fire Andy Reid or would they try to trade Andy Reid? Right? Like, I don't know that any of those organizations, good, well run organizations, are just coming out and firing one of the best head coaches in the NFL. And I, mean, I, no, think, I guess Sean Payton was freaking retired. The New Orleans Saints got great compensation for him. Like, well, that was, I mean, that was sort of different because they, they had his rights and they already they, had a new head coach. They Lions have Mike Rabel's rights. He's they do. Contract. They, they do, but they, I think an important part of this is the timeline. I think this is the crucial part. Like, some people are going to mock this and say, like, oh, the Titans are too lazy. To, it was too complicated to figure out the trade details. Like, just don't be lazy and figure it out. And I get that aspect of it, but I think the timing is super important here because if, if, and they shouldn't because they should conduct a full head coaching search. But if they have an idea of some candidates they want to get in the building immediately to interview and try to hire, they got to move quickly because these other vacancies have already requested interviews. You know, Chargers have already requested to interview people. Commanders have already requested to interview people. The Raiders have already requested. Like Panthers. it's happening. Packer, uh, Panthers, sorry. It's happening around the league. Like the, this stuff is in motion. If the Titans couldn't work out the trade details because they're hung up on like a mid round pick or something. And it takes till Friday. You could miss out on somebody. Now. I don't think you miss out on Bobby Slowick because he's in the playoffs. So he's not going to take a head coaching job in the next few days. Same with Ben Johnson. But if it's some, I mean, I don't know who they're, who they're targeting, but like a Jim Harbaugh or somebody like that, like, you got to move quickly. So no I, way in hell Jim Harbaugh's coming to Tennessee. I agree. Sorry to I agree. No, no way in hell. I agree. Um, and most of the top candidates are in the playoffs. If, if you look at Mike McDonald, Dan Quinn, I think at the end of this little emergency pod, we're going to go through our favorite potential candidates for the Titans. But before we get there, I, I do think there is some thing that, that is true about the had to move quickly part of this. I think that's the more important part versus the it's too complicated to work out a trade. And the Titans do need to move quickly. If they are going to go through and conduct a full head coaching search like they should, then they got to get like a consulting team in place to put a candidate list together. Like they got to start moving on this. And he, yeah, you can say they if they knew they were going to do that, they could start putting that together now and then work out the trade details. But I mean, on some level, I think it's Dumb to give up an asset, which Mike Vrabel was, that could have netted you something. But on another level, I appreciate the decisiveness to just make a decision, let us know what's happening, and and move on with our lives as we look forward to the next head coach. I get that. I I do think, though, we, we I don't want to undersell too much the fact that this is a bad football team that needs draft picks, right? And, they, yeah. and so it's like, let's not forget that part of it um i want to talk a little about the timeline of how we got here because yeah. whether you support this decision or don't support this decision whether you like mike rabel or don't like mike rabel you should be very bothered about the timeline of how we got here right the process and sometimes look the titans could come out of this thing okay they could end up hiring a great head coach i would wager they're going to get worse that they're going to hire someone worse than mike rabel i'm sorry uh the sky's falling sort of opinion but I think they're going to get worse, but hey, my point is I, I realize it, it could go well. They could come out of this thing okay. But if you're a process over results person, the process should really, really bother you, okay? In February of 2022, they extended the contracts of both Mike Vrabel and John Robinson. And according to Joe Rexroad's article on The Athletic, which dropped uh, early, uh, the day Vrabel was fired, excellent article, uh, apparently that was good money. Amy Anastrunk gave really good money to Vrabel and Robinson to extend those contracts. About 11 to 10, 10 to 11 months later, John Robinson was out, right? Literally later that year, same calendar year, 2022, John Robinson was out. And what did we say when she made that decision? We said she is acknowledging this is a roster problem and not a coaching problem. And I'll give her credit where it's due. She was ahead of the curve on that one. Good vision, right? Because my initial reaction when John Robinson was fired, I think yours was too, was a little bit of surprise. Yeah. We thought John Robinson had earned enough goodwill to get one more chance to build this roster back up, right? None of us feel that way anymore. So credit her for seeing that before most of us did. A lot of us didn't, I don't think, at the time. So credit to her. But the point is that decision signaled it was a roster problem, not a coaching problem. Well, what has changed? This roster is still really bad in the wake of the mess that John Robinson has created. So don't sit here now and tell me 
this is results based or this is on field based. It's not because they felt they had a really good head coach. They knew he couldn't win with this roster, which is why they made the change of general manager. Okay. And Paul Kuharski, who did an emergency podcast earlier today, um, that was one of his reasons. He said, well, this was also based on the results. That doesn't make any sense when you look at the John Robinson thing that transpired essentially only one calendar year ago, right? In December of 2022. And then the second thing Paul Kuharski cited was Mike Vrabel not being very collaborative. Getting sick and tired of that word. We've heard it a thousand times uh, since they introduced and hired Rand Carthon, right? I'll go back to what I said yesterday. They dropped the ball conducting that process and not keeping their head coach happy. Now, look, again, if you employ Dennis Allen as your head coach, you employ Ron Rivera here at the end of his uh, cycle uh, as the head coach, like it matters very little to keep that guy happy, right? Because you know that's you know there's a good chance he's probably not going to be there. But when they hired Rand Carthon, their goal was to hire someone that was going to be a good fit with Mike Vrabel and be collaborative with Mike Vrabel and build this team in shared vision with Mike Vrabel, okay? And what, about one year later, less than a year later, Mike Vrabel's gone. Why? Because you did not end up hiring someone that was collaborative with Mike Vrabel. And even if that is partially Mike even hell, even if all of that is Mike Vrabel's fault, right? It seems like he's been the he's the more difficult personality. He's the smartest guy in the room. He is a bit of an asshole. There's no doubt about it, right? Yeah. So even if a lot of that is on Mike Vrabel, why the collaborative thing didn't work out, it is still on them for not finding someone that meshed well with Mike Vrabel. Because at the time, make no mistake, that was their goal. They wanted someone that meshed well with Mike Vrabel. So don't give me no bullshit now about it being on Mike Vrabel. They failed to hire someone that was a good fit. And, I, I'm, and I'm sure there were a lot of them out. Whether Hell, we made fun of Monty Austin for it. Looked like he would have been pretty collaborative with Mike Vrabel. He had a good first offseason in Arizona, yeah. in my opinion. Ryan Cowden came here initially with a great reputation. Now works for the New York Giants. Quickly landed on his feet. Whether there was an external candidate that would have been better fit, we don't know. But the point is, they did not hire someone that was a good fit with Mike Vrabel. And now they've chosen the guy that I don't – essentially siding with Rand Carthon, I'm not going to pretend to sit here and know that he's a fantastic general manager. I don't know. I know Mike Vrabel's a really good head coach. I do. And you ended up choosing the GM – that we've heard, oh, you know, what does he do in the building? We need clear, we need clearly defined roles for the people he's hired. Like, we don't know. And I'm worried this has disaster written all over it. I am. I think it reminds me, I shouldn't say this, but it reminds me of the AJ Brown trade a little bit, right? Where you almost reap what you sow. You had someone great in the building, you overplayed your hand. We'll just replace him with another version of him. I think there's a very, I think Mike Vrabel's a top 10 head coach in the NFL. That's my opinion. The odds tell me they're not going to get another top 10 head coach in the NFL, that they're going to downgrade at that position. They'll probably hire someone, may, or maybe they'll hire someone that we're initially excited about. And, and we deserve that right as fan. And that's fun as a fan. It's fun. It's going to be fun, right? This process is going to be fun. But let the results decide. Let's wait, right? Because the Los Angeles Chargers were very excited when they hired Brandon <laughs> Staley, okay? That's just a fact of the matter. The name of the game is you do not know if Ben Johnson's a good head coach. You do not know if Bobby Sloak is a good head coach. You have no idea. And you might end up finding out that he's a terrible head coach, whoever they end up hiring, assuming it's a first-time head coach, which I think it will be. Um, this whole thing, like, we're going to be excited, but I, I, I'm very worried a year, two years from now, I'll be sitting here saying, I told you so. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely possible. I want to go quickly through the pros and cons of what a new head coach could look like for this team. But before I get there, I want to read Amy Adams Strunk's statement that she put out shortly after this news broke. She said, Earlier today, I spoke with Mike Vrabel and told him about my decision to make a change at head coach. As I told Coach Vrabel, this decision was as difficult as any I've made as controlling owner. I appreciate Mike's contributions to the Tennessee Titans, both on and off the field. Anyone who has ever met him knows how passionate and genuine he is, and he's been a strong supporter of the Nashville community. We wish Mike, Jen, and the Vrabel family nothing but the best in the future. As the NFL continues to innovate and evolve, I believe the team's best position for su sustained success will be those who empower an aligned and collaborative team across all football functions. Last year, we began a shift in our approach to football leadership, made several changes to our personnel to advance that plan. As I continue to assess the state of our team, 
I arrived at the conclusion that the team would also benefit from the fresh approach and perspective of a new coaching staff. And then a, 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 long, a, a, lot, a couple more paragraphs about how she believes the Titans and their fans deserve to be a premier successful franchise. Now, in support of that statement, I want to read a Twitter thread put out by John Ledyard um, talking about how they believe that Mike Vrabel was a really good coach, but the reason he got fired had nothing to do with his ability as a head coach. And here it is. As PFF Brad and I, talking as John Leonard, just talked about on the pod, it was well known that he and Rand Carthon didn't see eye to eye on how to progress with the Titans. Carthon wanted to rebuild and garner assets. Vrabel wanted to bring in players and try to win, like DeAndre Hopkins, and do a two-timeline thing. That lack of a shared vision led to this disaster of a season. They should have traded Henry, Autry, Tannehill, etc. before the season and would now be loaded with draft capital. Vrabel's resistance to that hurt the team's ability to be more competitive in the future. I'm guessing that in the meetings in the past few days, that lack of a shared vision became apparent again. The Titans already missed an opportunity to gain valuable assets and be on a better rebuilding track. Vrabel's desire to be involved on the team building side was going to interfere with Carthon once again. They had to make a tough decision because I'm guessing Vrabel wouldn't pull back on wanting to be involved in that stuff. Basically made the Titans make a choice and they decided firing him and following Carthon's vision was the right move. I sort of agree with this. And as good of a coach as you think Vrabel may be, the idea that they shouldn't have rebuilt heading into 2024 was wrong. They absolutely needed to embrace the rebuild. And we've talked a lot about this in our little chat and as Titans fans online together, that the Titans didn't embrace the rebuild and it set them back because they were going to be stuck in this mediocre tier of teams that never get a high draft pick to truly get a blue chip player and truly turn around and rebuild. So I think as good of a coach as you think Vrabel may be, it's sort of like uh, what what undid Bill O'Brien in Houston, right? Bill O'Brien, the coach, was great. Bill O'Brien, the general manager, was a disaster. Vrabel wanting to control the vision of this team, not as good as Vrabel, the head coach and the leader of men on the field. And I think that that disconnect deserves merit. Like there, that is a legitimate it's, reason. You're you're leaning in way too much, in my opinion. And be, like we knew at the end of it, by the end of it, that Bill O'Brien was a really bad GM. Okay, we don't we don't know that about Mike Vrabel, and I think he at least deserves the opportunity to show us that he's a good or bad decision maker. We don't know that in my we don't have enough on Bill O'Brien. You had a lot by the end. We don't have enough on Mike Vrabel to say that. And uh, look, I'm not convinced. People are going to use that a lot and prop it up and no disrespect to John and Ollie and they're outside this market. I am not convinced that the did we rebuild, did we not rebuild was like at the heart of the fractured relationship between Mike Rabel and Rand Carthon. I, I'm not convinced well, that that was the I, gist of it. And and that's fair to not be convinced. But I think, you know, reading the details of Amy's statement, talking about that the best teams foster a collaborative environment and that she wanted a fresh approach from the coaching staff. Those are the key points there that make me think that she wants one of these young, innovative, whether it's on the defensive or offensive side, to be in charge of this team and lead and pair with Carthon to lead the vision of this team. But you failed to identify someone that was going to be collaborative with them or that, like I said like earlier, the personalities didn't mesh. That's on you. Uh, that's you fair. Failed. But that I mean, that is true, but it still comes around to where they believe the best future of this team is. And they hired Rand Carthon for a reason, believing in his vision for the team. And they obviously expected Mike Vrabel to sort of fall in line. That was a mistake, no doubt about it. But I think it's sort of like, it's a, a sunk cost fallacy here. Like what happened in the past shouldn't affect how you treat Mike Vrabel now. If it's not working, it's not working. Like give them a chance to have another another combative season full of dysfunction in the front office where they can't agree on the best way to go forward with the team. Amy had to make a choice, either Vrabel or Carthon. And they just hired Carthon and she just saw Vrabel put together back-to-back -back losing seasons. I'm not saying she made the right decision, but I'm saying I can see why she went with the Rand Carthon route. Let's go for a fully fresh approach. Um, we're running out of time here, so I want to do pros and cons really quick. Cons. Obviously, you know Mike Vrabel's a head coach, and there's a chance that you are stuck in a disastrous cycle like the Bears are, where you hire and fire somebody every three to four years until you find the next right guy, or like the Chargers. The players loved Mike Vrabel. I don't think there's any disputing that. You might have some locker room tension coming after this. I, I would be surprised if Derrick Henry returned, even if like someone like Danico Autry, who maybe they want back, maybe Rand Carthon wants back, but he was a, a Vrabel guy, so maybe... We'll see if he comes back. DeAndre Hopkins is still under contract, but will he be 
happy staying in Tennessee? Will he demand an out of some kind? We'll see how that goes. I think those are pretty obvious cons. The biggest one being that you might be stuck in a cycle of disaster for the next decade before you find the next head coach. Pros. The fastest rebuilds in the NFL have come with a new head coach. If we've seen this over the last 10 years, we go back to Sean McVay taking over for the the St. Louis Rams at the time, turning them into perennial contenders almost immediately. Mike McDaniel more recently in in Miami, they were, you know, me, me, middling mediocre franchise have now look good. Obviously there's some questions about their truly competitive, you know, are they truly an elite team? Probably not, but they've re, they've turned it around quickly. Dan Campbell with the Lions took him a couple seasons to to get there, but in his third season now, they are looking like one of the best teams in the NFC. Um, Bobby Slowick is a really great example in Houston. First year head coach came in, turned things around pretty immediately for Houston. Or uh, sorry, I said Bobby Slowick. D'Amico Ryan's in Houston coming in and immediately turning around that franchise who had the number two overall pick last year to you know winning the division this year. I'm not saying it's going to work because you have to find the right guy. But if you do find the right guy, the turnaround can be almost immediate. And I think that's the one area to be excited about. Let's hit the the top candidates on the market here for the Titans. Who, if you had to pick one guy that would be a dream come true, who is it? And then we'll talk through a few others. I think Ben Johnson would probably be my number one choice based on the resume he's built with the Detroit Lions over these past two years uh, and what he's done with a mediocre quarterback in Jared Goff. I I think that's a, a very obvious one. Offensive-minded head coach has to be the way they go. They've got to prioritize the development of Will Levis. That is of the utmost importance, who might now be learning a new offense. That's another uh, thing we didn't take into consideration here that could go poorly. That's a con. Now, if you did hire someone like Bobby Slowick, um, I guess, you know, similar coaching trees. Remember, uh, Liam Cohen, Bobby Slowick, Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan coaching tree, somewhat similar. That would be a pro to hiring Bobby Slowick. I would think he's going to be the, the number one favorite based on his experience with Rand Carthon in San Francisco, based on what he did in Houston this past year with C.J. Stroud. Again, the system is somewhat similar to what Will Levis is kind of familiar with, again, based on his Kentucky days. So I think for me, Slowick and Johnson are probably going to be at the top. Uh, at this point, you've gotten rid of Rabel. You've got to go with an offensive-minded head coach. Might as well take advantage of the opportunity to do so. Yeah, Bobby Slowick is interesting because he's one of those five Washington assistants who are all legends now, the other four being Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Matt LaFleur, and Mike McDaniel, who are all head coaches now. They were all on the same all staff really together in Washington. All really good offensive-minded head coaches. Bobby Slowick is the fifth one, the last one to get a head coaching opportunity. You expect it will come in this cycle. Obviously, the connections to San Francisco with Rand Carthon are there, so I think that if you're putting together odds, which are out, by the way, there are odds to who will be the next Titans head coach. Bobby Slowick would be at the top of my list. He's not the favorite to be the t- next Titans head coach. The favorite is actually Mike McDonald, the defensive coordinator in Baltimore, who is a defensive minded head coach. But if you're going to go with a defensive guy, I think Mike McDonald is an interesting one. Talking about being innovative and fresh in Amy's press conference, this guy has been one of the most innovative defensive coordinators since taking over in Baltimore. They were able to generate pressure from a variety of spots on their defense this past season. They don't have like a true standout edge rusher, but they led the NFL in sacks. Justin Matabuke had a breakout season. Jadavion Clowney looked like the Houston version of Jadavion Clowney, which he never looked like in Tennessee. Had two sacks against the Titans this year. So I think that that's an interesting approach, but I do agree with you offensive minded is the way to go but appreciate everyone for tuning in we'll be back next time until then y'all stay safe out there and tighten up a broadway sports media production